Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today, by popular request from many people in the group, I'm going to read the first portion of the Book of Enoch, the Book of Watchers. Part of this channel is a search for deeper understanding. Oftentimes, this leads beyond the Bible itself. Even in our attempts to fully understand the Bible, we must go beyond the book. And as we encounter references to social conditions, cultural practice, and even other writings mentioned within the scriptures, we are called to investigate and expand our knowledge in order to fully appreciate the context, knowledge base, and cultural significance of what is being taught. Thus, to fully understand the Bible, we are necessarily drawn to sources outside the Bible. These sources add to the historical, social, or theological understanding of biblical times. As our view becomes more macrocosmic, we see the panoramic setting and further understand the full truth with the, the scriptures. Yet in the case of Enoch, we are not going beyond the Bible. We are simply going beyond our Bible. The book of Enoch is contained in the Bible of the Ethiopic Christian Church. To lead us to sources of information outside of our Protestant and Catholic Bibles, we must know which books were popular and important at the time the Bible was being written. There are several books mentioned in the Bible which are not included in our Bible. They are not spiritual, quote-unquote, canon either because they were not available at the time the canon was originally adopted or at the time they were not considered inspired. There are lots of apocrypha and books like this of all the books quoted, paraphrased, or referred to in the Bible, the Book of Enoch has influenced the writers of the Bible, as few others have. Even more extensively than in the Old Testament, the writers of the New Testament were frequently influenced by other writings, including the Book of Enoch. I cannot give you a judgment as to the validity or worth of the Book of Enoch, but it is inspiring to read and very interesting. It's a meaningful question. Is not the non-canonical book that most influenced the thought and theology of the writers of the New Testament worth further research and contemplation? The book of Enoch was once cherished by Jews and Christians alike. It is read in certain Coptic Christian churches in Ethiopia. Most scholars date the book of Enoch to sometime during the 2nd century BC. We do not know what earlier oral tradition, if any, the book contains Enoch was considered inspired and authentic by certain Jewish sects of the first century BC and remained popular for at least 500 years. The earliest Ethiopian text was apparently derived from a Greek manuscript of the book of Enoch, which itself was a copy of an earlier text. The original was apparently written in the Semitic language, now thought to be Aramaic. There was a time that it was assumed that it was written after the Christian era. However, recent discoveries of copies of the book among the Dead Sea Scrolls found at Qumran prove the book was in existence before the time of Jesus Christ. These scrolls forced a closer look and reconsideration. It became obvious that the New Testament did not influence the book of Enoch. On the contrary, the book of Enoch influenced the New Testament. The first century Christians accepted the book of Enoch as inspired, if not authentic. They relied on it to understand the origin and purpose of many things from angels to wind, sun, and stars. In fact, many of the key concepts used by Jesus Christ himself seem directly connected to terms and ideas in the book of Enoch. The theories regarding the authenticity of Enoch vary widely. Some believe Enoch is Midrash, that is an elaboration on a biblical story. In this case, it is suggested that Enoch expands Genesis chapter 6. Another more controversial theory has Enoch predating the Genesis story. Like the book of Enoch, Genesis seems to have several authors with stories intertwined. We've talked about this with the J, E, and P manuscripts in our discussion on Neville Goddard. At best, I have found that the book of Enoch was considered scripture in the epistle of Barnabas and by many of the early church fathers such as Athenagoras, Clement of Alexandria, Arrhenius, and Tertullian who wrote that the Book of Enoch had been rejected by the Jews because it purportedly contained prophecies pertaining to Christ. Those that are interested in magic, 
will find Enoch absolutely critical reading because a lot of times you'll see references in magic spells and magic discussions that come directly from Enoch. And because of that, there is a Christian sect that sees the book of Enoch as evil and is very much against it. As I suppose there are going to be people in the comments saying that this is a book that's inspired by the Antichrist. The first part of the book of Enoch describes the fall of the watchers, the angels who fathered the angel human hybrids called Nephilim. The remainder of the book describes Enoch's revelations and his visits to heaven in the form of travels, visions, and dreams. The book consists of five distinct major sections. First, the book of watchers, second, the book of parables of Enoch, third, the astronomical book, fourth, the book of dream visions, and fifth, the epistle of Enoch. Most scholars believe that these five sections were originally independent works. So we are going to read the first section. And it's just fun to listen to. It's fun to read. And it's super fascinating. And if you have not read the book of Enoch, you're going to be in for a surprise. Even if you don't necessarily believe in this stuff, it is very interesting and exciting literature. What we know about Enoch is he was the great-grandfather of Noah. Enoch contains unique material on the origins of supernatural demons and giants, why some angels fell from heaven, an explanation of why the Great Flood was morally necessary, and prophetic exposition of the thousand-year reign of the Messiah. The Book of Enoch, Section 1 The Book of the Watchers Chapter 1 The words of the blessing of Enoch, with which he blessed the elect and righteous, who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and spoke. Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one which is to come. Concerning the elect I spoke, and took up my parable concerning them, the Holy Great One will come out from his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens. And all will be smitten with fear, and the watchers will quake, and great fear and trembling will seize them unto the ends of the earth, and the high mountains will be shaken, and the high hills will be made low, and will melt like wax before the flame. And the earth will be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth will perish, and there will be a judgment upon all men. But with the righteous he will make peace, and will protect the elect, and mercy will be upon them, and they will all belong to God, and they will be prospered, and they will all be blessed, and he will help them all, and light will appear unto them, and he will make peace with them. And behold... He comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Chapter 2 Observe you everything that takes place in the heaven how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold you the earth, and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last, how steadfast they are, how none of the things upon earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. Behold, the summer and winter, how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. Chapter 3 Observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves, except fourteen trees, which do not lose their foliage, but retain the old foliage, 
from two to three years until the new comes. Chapter 4 And again, observe you the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth, over against it. And you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun. And the earth also burns with growing heat, and so you cannot tread on the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat. Chapter 5 Observe you how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. For what reason give you heed and know with regard to all, all his works, and recognize how he that lives forever has made them so. And all his works go on like this from year to year forever, and all the tasks which they accomplish for him, and their tasks change not, but according as God has ordained, so it is done. And behold, how the sea and the rivers in like manner accomplish and change not their tasks from his commandments. But you have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of the Lord, but you have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. O you hard-hearted, you will find no peace, therefore will you execrate your days, and the years of your life will perish, and the years of your destruction will be multiplied in eternal execration, and you will find no mercy. In those days you will make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous, and by you will all who curse, curse, and all the sinners and godless will imprecate by you, and for you, the godless, there will be a curse, and all the righteous will rejoice, and there will be forgiveness of sins, and every mercy and peace and forbearance, there will be salvation unto them, a goodly light, and for all of you sinners, there will be no salvation, but on you will abide a curse. But for the elect there will be light and joy and peace, and they will inherit the earth. And then there will be bestowed upon the elect wisdom, and they will all live and never again sin, either through ungodliness or through pride. But they who are wise will be humble, and they will not again transgress, nor will they sin all the days of their life, nor will they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they will complete the number of the days of their life, and their lives will be increased in peace, and the years of their joy will be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. Chapter 6 And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of the men, and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone will have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swore they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Samlazaz, their leader, Arikibah, Ramayel, Kokabiel, Tamlal, Ramlal, Danel, Ezekiel, Asael, Aramaros, Batarel, Antanel, Zakail, Samsapil, Satarel, Turel, Jomjael, Sarael. These are the chiefs of tens. Chapter 7 And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants, and they became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind, 
and they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Chapter 8 And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Then Jaza taught enchantments and root cuttings Armoros the resolving of enchantments, Barakijal taught astrology, Kokabel the constellations, Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds, Arakael the signs of the earth, Shamshael the signs of the sun, and Sarael the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. Chapter 9 And then Mikael, Uriel, Raphael and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and God of the ages. The throne of your glory stands unto all the generations of the ages, and your name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. You have made all things and have the power over all things, and all things are naked and open in your sight, and you see all things and nothing can hide itself from you. You see what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Semjaza, to whom you have given authority to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying, and make their suit to the gates of heaven, and their lamentations have ascended, and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And you know all things before they come to pass, and you see these things, and you do suffer them, and you do not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Chapter 10 then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spoke, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name hide yourself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Blind Azazel hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he will be cast into the fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish, through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel, said the Lord, proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, and the children of the watchers from among men, and cause them to go out, send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle, for length of days will they not have, and no request 
that they, i.e. their fathers, make of you, will be granted unto their fathers on their behalf, for they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord said unto God, Go behind Semjaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth until the day of their judgment and of their consummation, until the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days they will be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they will be confined forever, and whosoever will be condemned and destroyed will from then on be bound together with them to the end of all generations, and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear. And it will prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth will be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And then will all the righteous escape, and will live until they beget thousands of children in all the days of their youth, and their old age will they complete in peace. And then will the whole earth be tilled in righteousness, and will all be planted with trees and be full of blessing. And all desirable trees will be planted on it, and they will plant vines on it, and the vine which they plant thereon will yield wine in abundance. And as for all the seed which is sown thereon, each measures of it will bear a thousand, and each measure of olives will yield ten presses of oil, and you will cleanse the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth, destroy from off the earth, and all the children of men will become righteous, and all nations will offer adoration and will praise me, and all will worship me, and the earth will be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment, and I will never again send them upon it from generation and generation and forever. Chapter 11 And in those days I will open the store chambers of blessing which are in the heaven, so as to send them down upon the earth over the work and labor of the children of men. And truth and peace will be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men. Chapter 12 Before these things Enoch was hidden, and no one of the children of men knew where he was hidden, and where he dwelt, and what had become of him, and his activities had to do with the watchers, and his days were with the holy ones. And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty, and the king of the ages, and the watchers called me, Enoch the scribe, and said to me, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go declare to the watchers of the heaven, who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. You have wrought great destruction on the earth, and you will have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. And inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children, the murder of their beloved ones will they see, and over the destruction of their children will they lament, and will make supplication unto eternity, but mercy and peace will you not attain. Chapter 13 and Enoch went and said, Azazel, you will have no peace. A severe sentence has gone out against you to put you in bonds, and you will not have toleration nor request granted to you because of the unrighteousness which you have taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which you have shown to men. Then I went and spoke to them altogether, and they were all afraid, and fear and trembling seized them, and they besought me to draw up a petition for them that they might find forgiveness, and to read their petition in the presence of the Lord of heaven. For him that point forward, they could not speak with him, nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins for which they had been condemned. Then I wrote out their petition, and the prayer in regard to their spirits, and their deeds individually, and in regard to their requests, that they should have forgiveness and length. And I went off, and sat down at the waters of Dan, 
in the land of Dan to the south of the west of Hermon. I read their petition until I fell asleep, and behold, a dream came to me and visions fell down upon me, and I saw visions of chastisement, and a voice came bidding me to tell it to the sons of heaven and reprimand them. And when I awaked, I came unto them, and they were all sitting, gathered together, weeping in Abel's jail, which is between Lebanon and Senesir, with their faces covered. And I recounted before them all the visions which I had seen in sleep, and I began to speak the words of righteousness and to reprimand the heavenly watchers. Chapter 14 The Book of the Words of Righteousness and of the reprimand of the eternal watchers in accordance with the command of the Holy Great One in the vision, I saw in my sleep that I will now say with the tongue of flesh and with the breath of my mouth, which the Great One has given to men to converse therewith and to understand with the heart, as he has created and given to man the power of understanding the word of wisdom, so has he created me also and given me the power of reprimanding the watchers, the children of heaven. I wrote out your petition, and in my vision it appeared like this, that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity, and that judgment has been finally passed upon you, yea, your petition will not be granted unto you. And from now on you will not ascend into heaven unto all eternity, and in bonds of the earth the decree has gone out to bind you for all the days of the world, and that previously you will have seen the destruction of your beloved sons, and you will have no pleasure in them, but they will fall before you by the sword, and your petition on their behalf will not be granted, nor yet on your own, even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written. And the vision was shown to me like this, Behold, in the vision clouds invited me, and a mist summoned me, and the course of the stars and the lightning sped towards me. And in the winds in the vision caused me to fly, and lifted me upward, and bore me into heaven. And I went in until I drew nigh to a wall which is built of crystals, and surrounded by tongues of fire, and it began to affright me. And I went into the tongues of fire, and drew nigh to a large house, which was built of crystals. And the walls of the house were like tessellated floor made of crystals, and its groundwork was of crystal. Its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings, and between them was fiery cherubim, and their heaven was clear as water. A flaming fire surrounded the walls, and its portals blazed with fire. And I entered into that house, and it was hot as fire and cold as ice, there were no delights of life therein. Fear covered me, and trembling got hold upon me. And as I quaked and trembled, I fell upon my face. And I beheld a vision, and behold, there was a second house greater than the former, and the entire portal stood open before me, and it was built of flames of fire. And in every respect, it so excelled in splendor and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent. And its floor was of fire, and above it were lightnings and the path of the stars, and its ceiling also was flaming fire. And I looked and saw therein a lofty throne. Its appearance was as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun. And there was the vision of cherubim. And from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire, so that I could not look thereon, and the great glory set thereon, and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun, and was whiter than any snow. None of the angels could enter, and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory, and no flesh could behold him. The flaming fire was around him, and a great fire stood before him, and none around could draw nigh him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, yet he needed no counselor, and the most holy ones were nigh to him, did not leave by night nor depart from him. And until then I had been prostrate on my face, trembling, and the Lord called me with his own mouth and said to me, Come here, Enoch, and hear my word. And one of the holy ones came to me and waked me, and he made me rise up and approach the door, and I bowed my face downwards. Chapter 15 and he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, you righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach here and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent you to intercede for them, 
you should intercede for men and not men for you. Why have you left the high, holy, and eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as your sons? And though you were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also who do who die and perish. Therefore have I given them wives also, they might impregnate them and beget children by them, that nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual and living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. For as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants, who are produced from the spirits and flesh, will be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth will be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men and from the holy watchers, is their beginning and primal origin. They will be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits will they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven will be their dwelling, but as for the spirits of the earth which were born upon the earth, on the earth will be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits will rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Chapter 16 from the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits have gone out, will destroy without incurring judgment. Therefore will they destroy until the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age will be consummated over the watchers and the godless, yea, will be wholly consummated. And now as to the watchers who have sent you to intercede for them, who had been previously in heaven, say to them, you have been in heaven. But all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Chapter 17 And they took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire, and when they wished they appeared as men. And they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasuries of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and all the lightnings. And they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west which receives every setting of the sun. And I came to a river of fire in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. I saw the great rivers and came to the great river into the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of the darkness of winter and the place from where all the waters of the deep flow. I saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth and the mouth of the deep. Chapter 18 I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the earth and the firmament of the heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of the heaven. I saw the winds of heaven which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of the angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above. And I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. And as for those towards the east was of colored stone and one of pearl and one of jacinth, and those towards the south of red stone. But the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God of alabaster, and the summit of the throne was of sapphire, and I saw a flaming fire. And beyond these mountains is a region at the end of the great earth. There the heavens were completed, and I saw a deep abyss with columns 
of heavenly fire, and among them I saw columns of fire fall, which were beyond measure alike towards the height and towards the depth. And beyond that abyss I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above, and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it, and no birds, but it was a waste and horrible place. I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains, and to me when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, This is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven, and the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandments of the Lord in the beginning of their rising, because they did not come out at their appointed times, and he was angry with them, and bound them until the time when their guilt should be consummated even for ten thousand years. Chapter 19 And Uriel said to me, here will stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and will lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here they will stand. Until the day of the great judgment in which they will be judged until they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray will become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man will see as I have seen. Chapter 20 And these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels who is over the world and over Tartarus. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries. Mikael, one of the holy angels to wit, he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Sorakael, one of the holy angels who is set over the spirits who sin in the spirit. Gabriel, one of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Remael, one of the holy angels whom God set over those who rise. Chapter 21 And I proceeded to where things were chaotic, and I saw there something horrible. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible, and there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it, like great mountains and burning with fire. Then I said, For what sin are they bound, and on what account have they been cast in here? Then said Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, and was chief over them, and said, Enoch, why do you ask, and why are you eager for the truth? These are of the number of the stars of heaven, which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and are bound here until ten thousand years. The time entailed by their sins are consummated. And from there I went to another place, which was still more horrible than the former, and I saw a horrible thing, a great fire there, which burnt and blazed, and the place was cleft as far as the abyss, being full of great descending columns of fire. Neither its extent or magnitude could I see, nor could I conjecture. Then I said, How fearful is the place, and how terrible to look upon! Then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why have you such fear and affright? And I answered, because of this fearful place, and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, this place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. Chapter 22 And then I went to another place, the mountain of hard rock. And there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places, and deep and dark to look at. Then Raphael answered, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, These hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein, yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. And these places have been made to receive them until the day of their judgment, and until their appointed period, till the period appointed, until the great judgment comes upon them. I saw the spirit of a dead man walking suit, and his voice went out to heaven and made suit. And I asked Raphael the angel who was with me, and I said unto him, The spirit which makes suit, whose is it, whose voice goes out and makes suit to heaven? And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went out from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew, and he makes his suit against him until his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from among the seed of men. Then I asked, regarding it, and regarding all the hollow places, why is one separated from the other? 
And he answered me and said unto me, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous, in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirits will be set apart in this great pain until the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits. There he will bind them forever, and such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous, but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and of the transgressors they will be companions, but their spirits will not be slain in the day of judgments, nor will they be raised from there. Then I be blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who rules forever. Chapter 23 From there I went to another place to the west of the ends of the earth, and I saw a burning fire which ran without resting and paused not from its course day or night, but ran regularly. And I asked, saying, what is this which rests not? Then Ragwal, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said unto me, This course of fire which you have seen is the fire in the west which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven. Chapter 24 And from there I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night. And I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains, all differing each from the other, and the stones thereof were magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole of glorious appearance and fair exterior. Three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough ravines, no one of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in height, resembling the seat of a throne, and fragrant trees encircled the throne, and among them was a tree such I had never yet smelt. Neither was any among them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance. And its leaves and blooms and wood wither not forever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. Then I said, How beautiful is this tree and fragrant! And its leaves are fair, and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Mikael, one of the holy and honored angels, who was with me and was their leader. Chapter 25 And he said unto me, Enoch, why do you ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree? And why do you wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which you have seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne. For the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the Eternal King will sit, when he will come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it until the great judgment, when he will take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It will then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit will be for food to the elect. It will be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Then they will rejoice with joy and be glad, and into the holy place will they enter, and its fragrance will be in their bones, and they will live a long life on earth, such as your fathers lived, and in their days will no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then I bless the God of glory, the eternal King, who has prepared such things for the righteous and has created them and promised to give them. Chapter 26 And I went from there to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree. And there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain high than this, and better them a deep and narrow ravine. In it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. And to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former and of small elevation, and a ravine deep and dry between them, and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains, and all the ravines were deep and narrow, being formed of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks, and I marveled at the ravine, yea, I marveled very much. Chapter 27 
Then I said, For what object is this blessed land which is entirely filled with trees, and this accursed valley between? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, This accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here will all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the Lord unseemly words, and of his glory speak hard things. Here will they be gathered together, and here will be their place of judgment. In the last days there will be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here will the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment over the former, they will bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them their lot. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set out his glory and lauded him gloriously. Chapter 28 And then I went towards the east into the midst of the mountain range of the desert, and I saw a wilderness, and it was solitary, full of trees and plants. And water gushed out from above, rushing like a copious watercourse which flowed towards the northwest. It caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side. Chapter 29 And then I went to another place in the desert, and approached to the east of this mountain range, and there I saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh, and the trees also were similar to the almond tree. Chapter 30 And beyond these I went afar to the east, and I saw another place, a valley full of water, and therein there was a tree, the color of fragrant trees such as the mastic. And on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon, and beyond these I proceeded to the east. Chapter 31 And I saw other mountains, and among them were groves of trees, and there flowed out of them nectar, which is called Sorara and Galbanum. And beyond these mountains I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, on which were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of stacked being like almond trees, and one burnt it, it smelled sweeter than any fragrant odor. Chapter 32 And after these fragrant odors, as I looked towards the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice, nard, and fragrant trees, and cinnamon, and pepper. And then I went over the summits of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the Erythrean Sea, and went far from it, and passed over the angels Zotael. And I came to the garden of righteousness, and saw beyond those trees many large trees growing there, and of goodly fragrance, large, very beautiful, and glorious, and the tree of wisdom, whereof they eat, and no great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like those of the carob tree, and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine, very beautiful, and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, How beautiful is the tree, and how attractive is its look. Then Raphael, the holy angel, who was with me and answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which your father old in years and your aged mother, who were before you, have eaten. And they learnt wisdom, and their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. Chapter 33 And from there I went to the ends of the earth, and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other. And I saw birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth, on which the heaven rests and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come out, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets, of which individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their courses and their positions, and their times and their mouths. As Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, showed me, he showed all things to me and wrote them down for me, also their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their companies. Chapter 34 And from there I went towards the north to the ends of the earth, and there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds, when they blow, there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth, and they blow with violence. Chapter 35 And from there I went towards the west to the ends of the earth, and saw there three portals of the heaven open, 
such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals, and the same number of outlets. Chapter 36 And from there I went to the south to the ends of the earth, and saw there three open portals of heaven, and there came dew, rain, and wind, and from there I went to the east to the ends of the heaven, and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open and small portals above them. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continued to bless the Lord of glory who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. So this concludes the book of the Watchers. And I have to say, from the first times that I read this, I don't remember it like I did in reading it now. We have a very angry and vindictive God that is willing to punish for eternity for the sins of these angels. And we have a story where these angels beg Enoch, please, just ask for our forgiveness, petition for our forgiveness, and God does not forgive them. It's interesting, he treats the earth sort of like a flat earth, so flat earthers probably love the Enoch. And the way that he talks about stars clearly shows a misunderstanding, perhaps, treating the stars as if they're small and not what they actually are. I don't know what to make of this. I think it's important historically to understand the source of some of these. And maybe this was created to further expand on an understanding of the great question, why would God destroy the earth? I'm sure that that question haunted many people of that day. And for there to be a story that sort of explains it, which is referenced in the Bible, the story of the giants of the Nephilim, we have an expansion of that story. But I can tell you that when I am reading this, my higher self is pointing out all the little things that don't make sense. And so I think that part of this is inspired, that we cannot completely deny it, but part of this doesn't make sense. Perhaps there is some sort of symbolic analysis that could be done in the classic Neville way. When they asked Neville about this book, he said, it's quite beautiful, but I do not consider it to be an essential work of reading the Bible. So I'm more interested in your comments than what my analysis is because I need to learn more about this. Obviously, I don't know. So what do you know about this mysterious book and its meanings? If this episode does well and by request, I will read future sections of this book. We'll wait and see how you guys respond to it as this is a little bit unusual for the channel. In any case, you can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.